Hello everybody, it's David Panush of the Edmund Burke School and this is a video lecture for Stumbling on Happiness Chapter 6, which is the first chapter in the section on presentism. Um, and Stumbling on Happiness is by Dan Gilbert. Let's jump right in. So, uh, we're still dealing, just like we were in the last section, on sort of the failures of imagination because when we think about decisions that we want to make about the future, we have to use our imagination to make those decisions. And now we're dealing with this idea of how do we know or think about how we would feel in the future. So again, I'm imagining two options that I might take. Um, how do I know or guess how each one would feel? Um, and so generally the idea is, well, I think about how I might have felt in the past um, and what emotion, how it feels to feel that way. And then I sort of project that into one option or the other option. The problem is um, whenever we imagine anything in, about the future, whether it is something concrete or objective or something like an emotion, um, the present is using the same exact um, machinery as our imagination. And the present um, is what we use to imagine the future. And that brings with it all kinds of problems because we're not aware of the influence of the present on our imaginings of the future. And in particular, um, it's particularly influential when we think about um, something as sort of mushy as feeling. So um, Daniel Gilbert introduces this idea of pre-feeling. Now, do not be fooled. What he's saying is that pre-feeling is something we do, but it's not something we do accurately or well. So the idea of pre-feeling is that how to imagine how I would feel if. So how would I feel if I took this job? How would I feel if I switch from psychology to photography? How would I feel if? And so that's what pre-feeling is, right? So the one thing you start with saying, well, I'm gonna use my memory of previous feelings to try and construct an imagination of my future feelings. At the same time, the only way I can think about feelings or objects for that matter is to use the same exact parts of my mem of my brain that are processing my feelings or my visual field right now. And the present always takes priority. So in other words, I don't have like a separate part of my brain with which I can imagine future things. I only have the part of my brain that is already imagining pr or actually processing present feelings or present objects. So in other words, if I'm looking at a dog and you say, imagine a cat, I can do it, but it's hard and it's going to be easier if I close my eyes, right? Because my visual field is processing dog, 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 and, and but you're asking me to imagine cat, but I have to use the same exact parts of my brain that are seeing the dog. And obviously from an evolutionary perspective, the present needs to take priority over imagination because the present is what you know is, is going to get us surviving or killed or reproducing or whatever. Um, so that's the, the, the main issue. The main issue is that when we pre-feel, we make the mistake of having the present crowd in on our imagination. And like so many other things that we're learning about in this book, we're not aware of the influence of the present on our imaginations of the future. So um, back in the very first slide, for instance, I got a picture of a grocery store, right? Everybody knows that if you go grocery shopping when you're hungry, you might end up buying more food than if you go grocery shopping right after eating. And that, you know, in other words, if I had a shopping list, in theory, if I were completely rational and really good at imagining the food I will need for the coming week, the amount of food I'm going to eat in the coming week shouldn't change based on whether or not I just ate or not, um, or rather basically like whether or not I'm hungry at that moment or whether or not I'm full at that moment, but it does because when I imagine how much food I'm going to need for the rest of the week, it's overly influenced by how I'm feeling right now, full or hungry. And just like I, it's hard for me to imagine the cat when I'm looking at a dog, it's hard for me to imagine um, being full when I'm hungry or being hungry when I'm full because my body's telling me I'm hungry or I'm full right now and my imagination can't really get outside of the present. Um, so I've got a, an image here of, of a sunny day. The same thing happens with weather and 
um, those of you who are visiting colleges should should keep this in mind because what is you know one of the things we do when we go to visit a college is we try to imagine ourselves there what would it feel like if I were here and at that moment it could be a rainy day it could be a sunny day and if you ask um, people you know how do they imagine their future happiness or how do they imagine even their current happiness um, on a sunny day they tend to say they're going to be happier or that they are happier and on a rainy crummy day they tend to imagine they'll be less happy or that they are less happy um, you know on average same random people representatively should shouldn't change because of the weather but it does because people are overly influenced by their current experience of their happiness based on the weather um, but they're not they're not super aware of it and so that is the pre-feeling uh, mistake we mistakenly conclude this is a quote um, that we will feel tomorrow as we feel today um, sometimes we're dimly aware of it um, but most of the time we're not and that's the problem all right if you have any questions come and see me